Last night, a man in Texas was executed. His name was Mark Strowman, and he was given a lethal injection by the state of Texas because he let himself get consumed with hate. Ten days after 9-11, Strowman went on a shooting spree, hell-bent on killing as many Muslims as he could. On three separate nights, he walked into Dallas gas stations with a shotgun, opening fire, killing two Muslim men and shooting another man in the face. The third victim, Rais Buyan, just barely survived the shooting. Buyan will be partially blind for the rest of his life because of his injuries, but he wasn't interested in eye-for-an-eye -eye justice. Why? Because his Muslim religion preaches forgiveness. All the way up until the day that Stroman was executed, Buyan petitioned the state of Texas to spare Stroman's life, launching a global petition to have his sentence commuted to life without parole. I forgave Mark Stroman many years ago. In fact, I never hated him. I never hated America for what happened to me. I believe he was ignorant and not capable of distinguishing between right and wrong. Otherwise, he would not have done what he did. In my faith, forgiveness is the best policy, and Islam doesn't allow for hate and killing. And Stroman took notice. He was struck by the compassion that was afforded to him by one of his victims, and he changed his way. In a message to Rais Bullion from jail, Stroman said, In the free world, I was free, but I was locked in a prison inside myself because of the hate I carried in my heart. It is due to Raiz's message of forgiveness that I'm more content now than I've ever been. And last night, Stroman built on the message and used his last breath to issue these last words for us all to hear. Hate is going on in this world, and it has to stop. Hate causes a lifetime of pain. As a result of what a group of hateful men, and not what a religion, did on 9-11, our nation, just like Stroman admitted to, is often consumed with hate. We have a man running for president who's disqualified Muslims from serving in his administration and argue that our nation has the right to deny Muslims a place of worship. Would you be comfortable appointing a Muslim either in your cabinet or as a uh, federal judge? No, I will not. So you're saying any community, if they want to ban a mosque? Yes, they have the right to do that. We have a prominent member of Congress who's using his powers as chairman of the Homeland Security Committee to whip up fear in our nation and investigate American Muslims for radicalism. I believe it's important to have this investigation on radicalization of the Muslim community. We've seen what happened in England. We know that al-Qaeda is trying to recruit people over here, such as they did with the subway bombing in New York last year, the attempted subway bombing, Times Square bombing. These are all people living legally in the United States. We have the most popular cable news network saying that all terrorists are Muslims and warning, uh, warning Americans about victory mosques in New York City and Tennessee and hate-fueled caliphates springing up to bring Sharia law to America. Not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. If you are an 18 to 28-year-old Muslim man, then you should be strip searched. And if we don't do that, there's a very high probability we're going to lose an airline. Building that Victory Mosque on what's in essence a burial site would be both disruptive and cold-hearted to the families of 9-11 victims. The most dangerous scenario is that radical Muslims seize power and put Sharia law into place. Same thing. These are all components of a hate machine, filling us all with fear and driving some of us, like Stroman, to lash out in violence. But Islam is not the real threat to America. Our own hatred, our own fear, is the biggest threat to this nation. As the Southern Poverty Law Center points out, there are more than a thousand hate groups operating across America today. Their numbers have grown by 54 percent since 9-11. They are neo-Nazis, Klansmen, white supremacists, black separatists, and border vigilantes. They're all over. They're all over the countries. The, the, the various militia, it's, it's, it's filling America. What they are not, however, are Muslims. In fact, according to FBI data, 94% of all the terrorist acts committed on U.S. soil over the past decade were not from radical Muslims, but instead from these very same hate groups that are popping up across America. 
And while our news media will feast once every few years on a Muslim attack that was thwarted, they ignore the hate crimes that are carried out every single day in America, often leaving families devastated and communities in distress. As Mark Stroman said just before the lethal cocktail was pumped into his arm, hate causes a lifetime of pain. So let's not let this story of forgiveness and frankly of enlightenment be forgotten. Let's end this hateful so-called war on terror and focus on ridding this nation of the far more destructive force, hate and fear. Brothers and sisters, you saw uh, there a very touching clip, a story I personally referenced early of a man who was shot in the face point blank. Point blank is this, with a shotgun by someone who hated him. But Allah Ta'ala didn't will that he would pass away as the two other victims of this killer would pass away. One a Muslim, one a Hindu, mistaken for a Muslim. Allah Ta'ala decreed that Rais Buyan would live and that he would not only live but that he would wage a valiant struggle so that his, his, his attempted murderer would also have his life spared. Mark Stroman was executed this past July after a valiant effort undertaken by the man he shot in the face that close. That effort didn't succeed, but because of the grace, because of the compassion demonstrated by Rais Buyan, Mark Stroman renounced his white supremacist ways. He renounced his hatred of Muslims, and he warned all of us in this country that indeed hate leaves a lifetime of pain. We could think of no better recipient for the third United for Change Award for Excellence in Human Service than Rais Boyan, so we ask him to come forward to receive that reward. Takbir. Thank you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all. This award, I don't deserve that. The message I was carrying for the last several months, the message of compassion, forgiveness, and healing, that message deserved this, this crest, this award. As a simple human being, As a simple human being, as American Muslim, as American citizen, I did just my part. I did not do anything extraordinary, which I believe. And I strongly believe that on September 22nd, 2001, when I got my life back, I knew there, are, there were very good, uh, important reasons why Allah saved my life. And I'm here today because that day he didn't take me. He gave me a chance to leave and pass the message of compassion, forgiveness, and healing, which we need badly at this moment in this country. We cannot live in the fear. We cannot live in the past. Yes, September 11 did a great damage not only to this country, to the entire world, but as a human being, as an American citizen, our duty to move forward and do our individual part for a better future. 
Yes, Mark Stroman tried to take my life because I was brown skin. I'm brown skin, and my faith is Islam. But what Islam taught me? Yes, I had the equal. I had the right to ask for equal justice. But no, I did not go for that. The path of my Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that taught me that forgiveness is the best policy, which Islam also teaches. I choose the path of forgiveness. I not only forgave him, I thought about that his execution will not eradicate hate crimes and hate from this world. But if he's given a chance, maybe he'll become a spokesperson, raising awareness of hate crimes, teach others not to follow his path. Because of my Islamic faith, because of my parents' teaching, I went even farther. Even I went to Europe, I spoke in the European Parliament, the German Parliament, when several European countries, even I went to the manufacturer company who produced lethal injection for the death row inmate to put to death. I convinced them that that is the right thing to do, write a letter to the governor of Texas, let them know they shouldn't use this drug to put Mark Stroman to death. I did the best I could, but still, we could not save Mark Stroman's life. He was put to death on July 20th. But the campaign did not stop there, still is going with two more message. Actually, there was three more three message. Save Mark Stroman's life, who is my attacker, who also killed two other people because of his anger, because of September 11. Save his life, lower his punishment, and also bring awareness of hate crimes and also help the victims of hate crimes. What Mark Stroman did that was a hate crime because of his ignorance, because of his hate, anger, and um, at the end, you know, he, we, we couldn't save him, but in his own voice, he said what he did that was, most Americans wanted to do the same thing, but didn't have the girls to do that. No, that's a wrong statement. He, Mark Stroman, did not represent Christian community. He did not represent American people. He did not represent even white community. He was an individual person full of hate and anger. Same thing. That 19 hijackers, they don't represent Islam. They don't represent the Muslim community all over the world. They are just individual lost soul who hijack my faith, my Islam faith, and all of yours, and the rest of the Muslim all over the world. They don't represent Islam. So because of them, Islam should not suffer in this world. And what I did, my Islamic faith encouraged me to go forward to save my attacker's life. Because of Islam, I did that. So to make it short, there's a lot to say, but time is very short. I want to say just a couple of facts. What we can do, we can talk every single day. We've been talking for the last 10 years, but things are not getting improved. What we can do as individual person, we all are responsible to make things better. Few requests to everyone. How we can improve? Please reach out to your neighbors. If you're a Muslim, don't be afraid. If Allah wants you to go through some situation, some hardship, that is good for you because Allah knows what is good for you, what is good for us. So don't be afraid. If you're a Muslim wearing hijab, express yourself in Islamic way, please do that. Talk to your neighbor who doesn't know you. Talk to your coworker. Talk to the people in your neighbor, in your neighborhood. Let them know who you are. Don't let them define yourself based on their thoughts and ideas. You help them so that they can get the right definition who you are, who we are. So please reach out to the people. Let them know Islam is not a religion of violence. Rather, Islam is a Islam is the religion of peace, tolerance, forgiveness, like the other religion. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here.